In this video, we're gonna be making some jerk baits, some prey baits, some epic whip wads. We're gonna show you how to rig them up properly, all in one of my favorite colors, moon juice. What's going on all my fellow bait chuckers out there? Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I first want to start off by thanking all of you out there for subscribing to the channel. I never would have thought we would have gotten over 100 subscribers just on the first video that we uploaded to the channel. I, I really can't thank you all enough. Thank you so much to all the new people who have subscribed. What this really tells me is that there is a thriving fishing community out there and even more so a thriving bait making community within the fishing community. So thank you so much again. We have a lot more content to come and in today's video we're doing some pretty fun stuff. We're going to be color matching one of my favorite colors, Moon Juice. Now I'm pretty sure this is a Strike King color. Uh, I don't know, I mean obviously it's a Strike King color. They have their their worms in it, but I, I believe they originated this color. I might be wrong. Uh, if you know in fact where Moon Juice originated, please go ahead and drop it in the comments down below. I want to make sure I'm giving all the proper information in my videos. But Moon Juice, one of my favorite, favorite colors. We're going to shoot it up in a couple different baits today. I already have some worms. I have some uh, flipping baits already shot up in this, but I want to get more of the swim bait type baits in it because this is such a great color. And as I'm prepping for the moving baits coming again to the spring and to the summer, definitely want to get some Moon Juice in the arsenal. I'm going to shoot some jerk baits today so I can fill out my jerk bait box that I got. Brand new mold I got from Epic Bait Molds about two, three weeks ago. Loving it so far, so we're going to shoot some jerk baits. We're going to bust out the Epic Prey Bait Mold so we can get some larger size swim baits. And then one of my favorite confidence baits, the Epic Whip Wad. And after we're done shooting all the baits, we're going to come back here to the workbench and we're going to show you a couple different ways that you can rig up all of these different baits so that way you can catch some more fish come spring and summertime or really whenever. Whenever the moving swim bait bite is on, these baits will work for sure. So, Moon Juice. Strike King color, like I said, they have it here on the Ocho Worm. The Moon Juice is really cool. It's a laminate between kind of a dark green pumpkin, dark watermelon with some black flake. And then you have this kind of smoky, foggy, blue, pearlescent blue highlight on the bottom. We obviously don't have the exact recipe, but I have done multiple, multiple runs trying to match this color because as I mentioned, it is one of my favorite colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my recipe up on the screen. This way you can see all the colors that you're gonna need if you wanna match this recipe on your own, making some of your own baits. So in order to whip up the dark green pumpkin, First, our base color is going to be the Dark Watermelon by MF Colorants. And then also we're going to add a little bit of the Green Pumpkin Green also by MF. For our flake, we're going to be using 0.015 flake for the small flake and some 0.040 flake for the medium sized flake. We're also going to use just a dash of black in that recipe as well. Now, for the moon dust side of things, we're gonna be utilizing the power of clear. If you don't know the power of clear, I'm gonna put a link to Nick Rundle's video up in the corner. Go ahead and check that out. The power of clear, it's a very important video to watch, especially if you're a new bait maker like myself. So, all we're gonna be using inside of the moon dust color is we're gonna be using some blue highlight. It can be any blue highlight of your choice. I'm just gonna be using some MF blue highlight today. And then the secret ingredient to make all of this work is the Lureworks Sparkle Violet Flake. We have it in both sizes, the small 0.015 and the medium 0.040 Sparkle Flake. That's going to be key. And then just a half, just a half dash of black in there and that will give us our moon dust color. Today we'll be using the Dead On Plastics Swim Bait Jerk Bait Blend because we are making jerk baits and smaller size swim baits, so medium durometer. But this exact recipe carries over whether you're going to use softer durometer plastisol for worms, whether you're going to do harder plastisol for crawl tubes, flipping baits, or whether you're going to do some larger swim baits. The same recipe carries across no matter which durometer I found, at least between those three and Dead On Plastics. Color recipes always vary depending on what your source plastisol is. Everything I do here on this channel is based off of using dead on plastics, plastisol, that is our plastisol of choice around these bait chucking parts. To give an example of the color match, this is a whip wad I have poured up. I've been using it on a jig, this is from earlier in the fall, and you can see it's almost a near exact match. 
And we're also going to show you a little trick that I've done here using one of our colors to cause a special effect that you can either add or remove completely up to you. And we'll talk more about that later on in the video. So we have a fresh cup of Plastisol right out of the microwave. First color in is going to be our dark watermelon. We're going to go 40 drops. All right, there we go, 40 drops of dark watermelon. And you can see this makes it kind of a dark brownish green, but it's not quite green pumpkin. It's, well, it's dark watermelon. So in addition to the dark watermelon, we're also going to throw in 20 drops of the green pumpkin green. All right, there we go. 20 drops of the green pumpkin green. And there we go, it's starting to green up now. That's looking excellent. Fantastic. That's just a beautiful, beautiful dark green pumpkin right there. Now we got to get our flake in there. And so for our flake, it calls for one eighth of a teaspoon of black flake. So I like to break that up. I like to do a sixteenth of the medium. And then I also like to throw in a sixteenth of the small. And I do heaping. You know, these are big, big heaping sixteenths. It can be a little bit over. You know, flake is really something you want to add to your own personal taste. I mean, that's the way I feel. Everyone likes their flake a little bit different inside of their baits, so to each their own. This is just my recipe. Feel free to go ahead and modify them any way you want to. Oh, and that's looking great right there. All right, and I think that's going to do it here for the dark green pumpkin. Pretty simple. This one's fairly simple. Beautiful green pumpkin, and let's uh, get a little color sample here. A lot of folks are asking uh, in the comments from the last video, what's this little sample piece I'm using right here? This mold is a color test mold by Epic Bait Molds. I believe it's about $25, and uh, I don't know if they normally list it on their site, but it's definitely something that you can request to be added into your order. And it's just a beautiful little mold that goes from shallow to deep, allows you to test the colors uh, that you're, of your Plastisol that you're mixing. So really great tool especially when we start to look at laminates and everything kind of side by side next to one another. So, all right, here we go. This is our green, dark green pumpkin. All right, and here we have our other cup of Plastisol, cup number two. And for this, again, we're gonna be utilizing the power of clear. Remember, I mentioned that earlier, meaning we're not gonna really be adding a whole lot of color to this here. It's really just a whole bunch of different powders and so forth. So the first thing we're gonna be adding is the highlights blue. Now, for the highlight blue, it requires one full 16th. And again, I encourage everyone, if you're using the same spoon, make sure to wipe off your spoon in between uses. You don't want to cross contaminate all of your powders, etc. So we've got a nice clean spoon here. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna choose like I like to be on a little bit of the lighter side you know that's kind of like a full sixteenth right there but it's not like bulging and overdoing it so a little blue highlight right there now with the powders you really want to mix it in good really want to mix it in good there you can kind of see that shimmer coming off of it right now that blue shimmer now it's hard to see while it's clear like this however in order to get this to pop we're just going to do one little, little tiny drop of black. And now that I'm thinking about it, we actually forgot to add our black to the green pumpkin. Dead on plastics black, very, very thick black. It does not take much. So we're just gonna do one drop. Just, boop, that's it. And then we need two drops over here in the green. So can't forget that. So we're just gonna go one, two drops over there in the green as well. So, we'll go over here, let's not forget to stir up the green. Move this aside to the second, there we go. I can't believe I forgot the black in the green earlier. Oh my goodness, my goodness, there we go. That's much more appropriate. That, I thought for a second it looked a little bit lighter. Okay, so we're gonna come on this side of the test cup here. 
And this is what it should look like. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get that green out of the way. And for this, there's our one drop of black right there inside of the uh, blue highlight. Ready? Now watch this pop. Watch what happens. Look at that just completely come to life once we add in that one drop of black. Isn't that something? Just a tiny bit of black really makes that highlight color pop. Now you can really see that blue. It's extremely translucent when you see it here on the knife. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Now, in order to get this to pop even more, the secret ingredient I told you about, the sparkle flake. So again, this calls for one eighth. We're gonna make sure to wipe off our spoon here. Again, we don't want any of that highlight powder getting in mixed in there. Okay, heaping teaspoon, one eighth. All right, well, we'll go a little more just because I, I love the sparkle flake so much. Uh, and then we're also going to add in a sixteenth of the fine sparkle flake. I'm using MF for this one here. Maybe a little more than a sixteenth. Do it up nice and big. I just love the sparkle flake. Love it, love it, love it. Now what's cool about this is that normally this is a purple, I mean it is, it's a sparkle violet flake, so it's obviously purple and violet. But when you mix in that blue highlight over the top of it, it really gives it kind of a dark blue effect. That blue really, really overtakes the purple. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit thick here. So we're going to have to put both of these colors back in the microwave, give them a stir, we'll get them in the vacuum chamber, get all the bubbles out, and then we'll meet you back here when we're ready to shoot. Okay, let's get some of this in here. You can see how clear that is. It looks dark when it's down there inside of the, uh, of the cup, but man, super, super clear. All right, let's get these microwaved up and in the vacuum chamber. All right, so while the vacuum chamber's going, I just want to pull the two primary colors out and stick them next to each other so you can really get a look and see at what the moon juice is going to look like. You see that there? It's a beautiful kind of a dark translucent green. You can kind of see when the light gets up to it. It's a really dark green pumpkin with black flake and then that highlight with that sparkle flake is really magical down there really really magical so great combination one of my favorites makes for great swim baits great punching baits etc absolutely fantastic there you go that should give you a nice good close-up look there awesome awesome All right, there we go. That's a great way to show off the magic of moon dust. After it's been out of the vacuum chamber, all the bubbles are out. Look at that. Absolute beautiful, beautiful color. Again, power clear, one drop of black. That's it, that's all we have in there. Very, 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 very light use of pigment inside of this right here. All right, we're checking the temperatures here on both of these now that they're vacuumed. That one was up to 320 as I was just stirring it. What are we at here on the green pumpkin? Yeah, about 320, 330. What are we looking at over here? Same thing, about 320. I think we are good to go. We are good to shoot. All right, boys and girls, make sure you don't forget the glove up. Here we go. Oh yeah, we're sucking it all the way down. All right, we're gonna start with the uh, the jerk baits first over here. Let's get these going. Nice even pressure. All right, tuck it on. Then we're gonna turn it. Move over to the whip wads. Make sure to top off the jerk bay mold. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. 
see how many epic prebates we can get in there. Oh, and that was it. Looks like we ran out. Okay, we definitely goofed up here and did not have enough plastic to get the jerk baits and all of the whip wads. Looks like we got one of the epic prey baits, but not all of them. So uh, the next round, what we'll start with is more jerk baits and then more epic prey baits because if I got all three whip wads, that's plenty for this run. I don't have a whole lot of plastisol left in the cups and I want to make sure I do get a couple epic prey baits because these are phenomenal. So, while we're waiting for that to cool off, let's take a look at the blending block and see what we're working with here, huh? Look at that. Now that's what I'm talking about. That beautiful translucent there with the blue highlights, fantastic. Along with that super dark green pumpkin. When you hold that up to the light, I'm telling you, it's fantastic light passes through it it's phenomenal it's absolutely phenomenal taking a look at the sprues even I mean that's just that gives you a really good idea of what that's gonna look like that beautiful kind of blue translucent bottom when it mixed together with that green absolutely wonderful look there's some of the thin parts you can see it there I can't wait for you to see these baits this this color is phenomenal all right, everybody, here we go. The five inch epic jerk bait mold. Oh, I'm so excited to see what these look like. Look at that, all came out on the one side. That's absolutely beautiful. Can you see that already? Here, you know what? Why don't we zoom in here and we'll take a closer look. What I love about this is how it starts off really really light green and then it fades into the dark as it gets thicker you can see how dark it looks but again that translucent underneath is allowing the light to pass through it as it gets a little lighter in the bottom darker towards the top now here's where the magic comes you ready now we got to pull these out one at a time oh yeah oh, that one already came off the sprue Come on, there we go. In fact, we'll start with that one. Take a look at that. Huh, is that not a beautiful laminate or what? That's that translucent belly coming in there on the bottom. All these look fantastic. Look at that, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, now some of these, look at there. Now we got a little hot there. I wonder what that was, but that side was okay. But that side over there, Hmm, hmm, okay. Maybe a little slower pressure next time. However, I mean, this two-tone is absolutely fantastic. Like I mentioned, this, this is absolutely one of my favorites. Fantastic. Whoo -wee. Love it, love it, absolutely love it. Okay, next up on the list is the Epic Whip Wad. Oh, and those turned out pretty good too. All right, look at that. Again, the whip wad is such a great mold. You can see here, the laminate shoots straight down and just, it continues around the tail. I really love how the laminate continues around the tail in this mold particular. Not many molds you see that on that sharp of a curve. And you can see here, there's a little bit of mixing going on, but when those two colors mix and flatten out in that tail, you get that real thin, dark pumpkin and it turns kind of that lighter green. It's just, oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I mean, look at that. Huh? Is that not a beautiful laminate? I mean, it's a beautiful bait, but that color is just, whew. Oh yeah, that green pumpkin, the green pumpkin in the tail there. Look at that beautiful laminate. Absolutely wonderful. Golly, would you look at that tail? Wow, just wow. 
All right, last but not least here, we have the Epic Prey Bait. Now, I know one of these did not turn out fantastic. Yeah, there it is. There it is. We knew it was going to be yucky. We ran out of plastic. Let's just ignore that that one ever happened. This one right here. Ooh, look at this. Beautiful. Let's get the mold out of the way. Look at that. Is that not a thing of beauty? Huh? I mean, that's just a wonderful, wonderful bait. Look at the laminate. Even better on that side. Beautiful translucent blue belly. Dark green pumpkin semi see through on the top. Absolutely fantastic. Woo! I can't wait to fish these. Get some eyes on here. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is absolutely one of my favorite colors. So next, what I wanted to do was show everybody how to rig up some of these baits. I see a lot of folks just kind of inject the baits and then they kind of stop there. And I really wanted to show everyone how you can use these baits because you can rig them up a variety of different ways. So let's start with the jerk bait to begin with. So the five inch jerk bait standard, very much similar to a fluke. Everyone knows and loves the fluke. It's a fantastic bait. So a classic way to rig this up is with just a regular 3 aught or 4 aught EWG wide gap hook. Everyone knows that. You kind of hook it through the nose, bring it back through, and then there's your weightless jerkbait. But one thing that I've noticed as I've gone out and kind of searched the interwebs in my local sporting goods stores, I found an unusual hook, believe it or not. Guggen, of all things, has a pretty unique hook here. They call it the uh, the weighted dart hook and the dart and toad hook. Uh, this is a hook design they actually designed to work on their darts, which is their version of a fluke, as well as their toad bait that they have. So these are the hooks here. They have a very unique shape to them, you'll see. I haven't been able to find another hook. Gamakatsu has one that's very similar to this hook, but it's not quite exact. I find that this dart hook is really kind of one of a kind. If you happen to know a better alternative, let me know, but I'm going to link all the gear you see here. Everything's going to be linked down below in the description per always. So very unique shape on this hook here. So this is a 5 aught weightless hook, and again it comes in a weighted as well. I believe the 5 aught is quarter inch, and the uh, the 4 aught is eighth inch. Both work perfectly fine on this 5 inch jerk bait. So I'm going to go ahead and screw on the jerk bait. Screw it right in the nose there. Let's make sure we're facing the right direction. Yep, there we go. We could probably do one more turn. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And then let's see here, let's get this stretched back out. Let's find out where we need to poke through, right about there. And then we'll just come through, poke right through that hook slot. And the nice thing about this jerk bait, when you text pose it, the top of the jerk bait has a little tiny groove in it for that hook to sit in. So it sits in flush. And part of the reason I like this hook over top of a EWG hook is because it's a very slim profile here along the bottom of the jerk bait. Now, I did a horrible job screwing it in here, so the nose is a little kiltered on this one. But on a perfect rigging, that's perfectly straight up and down. And you can see when a fish bites this, it's just going to boom, slide right up there, 
plenty of room for the hook to slide inside the hook slot, plenty of room to get a gap of a bite on there. So really, really love this hook a lot. I found that this Guggen Dart and Toad hook really works well for the jerk baits. I haven't found a hook that uh, uh, kind of matches this profile. It works out really, really well. So their version. So again, if you're tired of using an EWG, Go ahead and give the uh, the Guggen Dart and Toad hook a try. And again, they come in weighted versions as well. So here's the uh, the quarter ounce as well as the eighth ounce. So if you like a little bit of weight on there and you don't want to use a little split shot or something up front, that's a great way to rig up your jerk bait right there. Okay, next, moving on to the Epic Prey Bait. Now, this is a 5.6 inch bait, and this bait was designed specifically to be used with an 8 aught beast hook. Now, you can use it with a plain beast hook. I've also used it with the owner Flashy Swimmer as well. Both work fantastic, so if you want a little bit of flash, a little bit of underspin, you can go ahead and use the owner Flashy Swimmer. Right now, we have the 8 aught beast hook here. So again, similar to our uh, darter hook there, we're going to find the center of the nose. And this comes with a large centering pin, which is awesome. I love the large centering pins. We're going to screw that on there. Make sure we're aligned with our bait. And now again, because this was designed specifically to be used with the, uh, the Adolph Beast Hook, you can kind of just take this hook and go almost all the way to the back of the hook slot here, and it works out perfect every single time. So we're just going to open up our hook slot here. We're going to go all the way to the back, poke through the top. Now the nice thing about the 5.6 Epic Prey Bait is that you don't even really need to worry about text posing the hook. Because it has a mini hook slot already in the bait, the hook just kind of rests back there for a very weedless presentation. It's very, very smooth, but that hook sticks out ever so slightly so you can catch it right there. And with that hook slot, it's great because the bait just completely folds down. So when a fish comes and hits it, boom, it's going to bite. That hook is just going to slide all the way through and you have all this gap right here to get bitten. That's just an immense amount of hook right there sticking through. The bait just collapses down beautifully. So again, take that 8 op beast hook, go ahead and get it all the way towards the back of that hook slot after you screw it in. That hook rests beautifully in there and there you have a perfectly rigged up 5.6 epic prey bait. Beautiful, beautiful. That tail, oh, mad action. Mad action in the water. So that's how you rig up the 5.6 inch Epic Prey Bait. Jumping over to the Whip Wad. There are several ways that you can rig up the Whip Wad because you can mold that two different ways. You can mold it with a hook slot or you can flip the hook slot over and get a solid bait and use it as a jig trailer. Now here's an example and I just took this off of my rod. The last time I took this out was around November and I caught a good two and a half pounder off this exact bait right here. Still got teeth marks in it. But this is an example of this exact color. This is Moon Juice and this is on a half ounce Dirty Jigs Swim Jig and it fits beautifully. The, the uh, Whip Wad is a perfect size bait for a full size swim jig. You can see that fits on there beautifully and when that's swimming through the water, that tail is back there whipping back and forth. Now the reason I like this for a swim bait trailer is because if you take a look at this tail with all that weight, now watch what happens when I slowly rotate it over. You see that big jump? Boom, boom. Do you see how much it's shaking the bait right there? When this tail is going back and forth, what that's doing is that's causing a lot of body roll. Now, if we listen to the tactical bassin guys, Matt always tells us with the swim jig, he's looking for secondary action, right? Stuff that can provide the body roll. The whip wad provides, I, I kind of think you get triple action because not only do you get the skirt flowing through the water, you get immense body roll from this tail wagging all over back and forth, so you get the body roll, but this tail, it is not just a flappy tail. If you see the action of the whip wad in the water, in fact, I will link to Marling Bates' video where he talks all about how he designed this bait and why, this provides, this tail is just flapping all over in the back there. So. Here it is on a swim jig. It's a great swim jig option. Another option, which I'll show you here, is if you want to swim it standalone, just by itself, you can go ahead and use a 4 aught owner beast hook. These were designed to be rigged on a 4 aught beast hook. So if you're not using a jig, you can use your owner 4 aught beast hook there as well. We're going to take our beast hook, just like we've been doing all of our other baits, and we're going to go ahead and find the center 
we're going to go ahead and poke it in there. Screw on the center, the nose of our bait. Okay, make sure we're lined up. Yep. All right. And then again, because it's designed specifically for this bait, we just go right to the back of the hook slot there and poke it straight up and through. And we can come right through the center of the bait there. And then again, boom, we'll just text pose it. Beautiful. And there we are, designed perfectly to be used on a four up beast hook. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. This is gonna swim through the water. You're gonna get two, you know, that secondary action. You're gonna get that tail whipping. You're gonna get that immense body roll back and forth without the skirt and the weed guard. You still get a beautiful weedless presentation. And again, because of that hook slot, when that fish bites, look at all that. Look at all that gap right there. So you're gonna have plenty of room for a fish to go ahead and get hooked on that. So. Again, lots of ways to rig all of these baits. I, I hope this video was helpful for everybody. The jerk bait, the epic prey bait, the whip wad. I mean, these are all just absolutely fantastic baits. Now, the one thing I did want to cover real quick before we end it, earlier in the beginning of the video, I mentioned a special trick about how to get kind of two versions of the bait. So what I want to show you here, specifically with the epic whip wad, you might notice a slight difference if I hold up the, uh, the jig version versus the version that we just shot. So in my hands, this is the jig version, and this is the version that we just shot. You might notice there's a little more green in the belly here versus the version that we just shot. The reason for that is because the dark watermelon that we used is a bleed color. That's right, if you noticed all the colors that were used, everything was a non-bleed except for the dark watermelon. I chose that on purpose. When I take a look and I examined the, uh, the Ocho Worm here from uh, Strike King, it doesn't have, it's not a clear line. It kind of blends into itself there. And what I found, the only way to achieve that effect is by using a bleed color. So, same thing we shot these today. Now, when I shot it, it looks perfectly clean because it hasn't had a chance to bleed yet. But what's going to happen now, over the course of the next two to three weeks, this green is slowly going to bleed into the clear and it's going to make that belly just a slight shade of green. Now, it doesn't change the effect of the bait. If I hold this up here, you can still see on the surface there is a very reflective blue belly and you still get the two-tone uh, dark green with black flake on the back. You get a beautiful transition here of the dark green fading down into a perfectly clear belly. And you can see down here on the fin, it's still perfectly clear. So you get a nice blending transition, a very, very natural look. Now, if you don't want this to bleed and you want it to stay crystal clear like this, you can pull that off too. Just make sure that you're gonna use a green pumpkin mixture that doesn't have any bleeding pigments in it. So you can just make sure to use a non-bleed pigment. Very simple, very simple. So again, I hope this was helpful for everybody. I hope that you can take this moon juice recipe and you can uh, you know, modify it to your own uh, needs, adjust it how you will, just a starting point, just my version of moon juice. I'm not saying it's the exact one, but it's a color I love and this is what I have found to be the absolute closest I can get to the moon juice worm. So, did you enjoy this video? Did you think I nailed it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions, if you have suggestions for color matches, baits, ideas, all that fun stuff, put them down in the comments. Thank you again, everyone, for the support. I, I'm having a blast doing fishing YouTube now, and there's so much more to come. Woo, I'm excited. Until next time, y'all know who it is. Your friend on this end, Michael, out here around the great Shakey's of Cali. And I just got down. I'll get back with you.